I watched my first Planet of the Apes movie just a little over a month ago. And for those of you keeping track, that's about when Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes dropped in theaters. Which is no coincidence because Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was the very first Planet of the Apes movie I ever saw. And after watching that movie, since then, I have watched every single Planet of the Apes movie in, chrono or in release order, I guess you could say. And I wanted just to take some time and talk about the entire franchise as a whole, all 10 movies, and you know, give my thoughts on each particular movie, but then also kind of you know, give my thoughts on, um, there are three different sections of the franchise. There's the 70s movies, there's the 2001 remake, and then the modern movies. And I just kind of wanted to give my thoughts about everything as a whole, as well as every single movie. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get started with the original Planet of the Apes. Now, this movie was kind of interesting. So, I saw Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which is the last one of the franchise and the last one I'll talk about. And after that, I was talking with my dad, uh, who doesn't watch movies, like, hardly at all. But he had seen the original Planet of the Apes. But this was probably, this was decades ago. I mean, this is probably, you know... I don't even know how long ago, but he had seen the original Planet of the Apes movie and he wanted to rewatch it. And I remember, and this is before I saw the movie, I, I was, remember talking to my dad and being like, I was like, like, don't even bother with like trying to remember that movie. That's just, don't, don't bother with the old stuff. Like you, you should watch the new one. You should watch the new one that has come out. And like, cause you don't need to know anything from the pr past trilogy to understand the new one. And it was funny because, like, so my perspective on, like, 60s, 70s sci-fi stuff is going to be based in, like, old Doctor Who or the 60s TV series for Star Trek. And that's, that's kind of what my, that's kind of my perspective on that. And um, I haven't seen a ton of the older Doctor Who stuff, um, but, like, I've seen a little bit of the 60s Star Trek. But because they don't have like the you know CGI or the ability to do really great special effects the pro the production value of those older shows is kind of crappy especially because they're TV shows and they have a TV budget so like the the old Star Trek and the old Doctor Who um you know they they just didn't there's not something that I that really appealed to me at all and so I felt like I was and they feel very dated very dated um, so for me, like, I was like, I thought Planet of the Apes was going to be like that. I was kind of, I was really wrong about that, to be honest. Now, sure, it's still, it's, it was made in, uh, I think 68, 1968 is when pl the original Planet of the Apes movie was created. And at least that's when it was released. And so they still had a lot of the limitations, but unlike the old, like the, the old TV shows, this actually, like, that didn't really bring this movie down. And I was, I was shocked about that. Um, you know, I was watching it, and after I watched it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually really good. I really enjoyed the original Planet of the Apes. I was very wrong about my, ex my expectations were extremely wrong about the original movie. And especially the thing I liked about this the most, by the way, there will be spoilers, I'll probably get into spoilers about all the movies here. Um, but with this, with the first movie, I was just shocked at like what they were able to do. Um, cause it was, they didn't use a ton of like really crazy, um, effects or anything like that. It was mostly just the ape costumes, which at first are a little off putting, but I think with the way they did it and the quality of the masks and everything like that, you just kind of accept it and then just kind of go, go along with it. You know, like it's still... It doesn't look real by any stretch of the imagination. The masks don't look real, but I think they're good enough to allow you to suspend your disbelief. And this is kind of, I would say this is pretty much true with all of the original 70s Planet of the Apes, where the effects, like, like the, the masks and everything like that, um, they, look re they look good enough that you can suspend your disbelief and you can just, it, it feels more like, okay, this is just kind of another creature ape, like another type of ape that's just going to be 
you know, it's, it's not like a real ape, you know, because um, in later movies they have like actual chimpanzees and you're like, oh, that's a real chimp, right? But then you see, you know, so it's, it's like this is the evolved version of the apes, you know, that's, that's kind of how it feels more or less. Um, and so that's kind of, so it kind of helps to suspend your disbelief throughout the entire 70s run of movies um, is just feeling like this is just a different type of ape, you know. Um, so obviously they don't look very real, but the first movie is all about making you feel insane. That's kind of the whole, the whole thing about the first movie, because you know you have um, you have uh, G George Taylor, I believe is his name, um, who you know he crashes down onto what he believes to be a different planet, and like his all his companions are either killed off or one of one of them um, they you know remove part of his brain and so he goes mute like all the other um, all the other humans in the movie and so he he has he's stripped of everything that could be used as proof to prove that he is um, from a different world and so he then has to with nothing have to try to prove that he is from a different planet that he you came in through from outer space and also you know, the human and the apes have swapped positions. So everything is just like crazy upside down. You have humans being treated like animals and then apes being treated as human. And then you have this human in the mix uh, that like, like he, he feels like a madhouse. And to me, this clip right here perfectly illustrates the whole movie. Roll clip. I say shut up! It's a madhouse! And so, the, to me, this movie was just absolutely fantastic. It had this weird, wacky idea, and it was able to execute that idea tremendously with its budget and with the time period that it was created in. And so, um, unlike you know a bunch of the other stuff that would have been made around this time, you know, like specifically Doctor Who or uh, Star Trek, where their limited budget really hinders the believability of you know what what you're looking at because like one of my biggest problems with star trek for instance is it looks like it's being filmed on a sound stage there is zero like there is nothing no part of me that ever believes that they were filming on location in any sense but in planet of the apes i don't know what is sound stage and what's filmed on location as far as i can tell they they might have built sets in like out outdoors and that's where they filmed I'm not, I actually don't know how they did it, but to be perfectly clear, <laughs> but, um, so the, the first Planet of the Apes movie I thought was absolutely tremendous, um, and definitely surprised me at how good that movie was. Um, now, if, now, Escape from, or, uh, no, um, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, this movie, I know this movie gets a lot of hate, well, maybe not hate, but um, from, a, from a lot of people that I, whenever, whenever I've looked at, you know, watch people, you know, ranking the Planet of the Apes movies, a lot of times Beneath the Planet of the Ape is, is either last or second to last. Um, and for me, you know, watching this movie, it was weird, it was wacky, absolutely. Not my least favorite, not by a stretch. There's a few others down the line that I think aren't as good as this movie. Um, I think the biggest problem with Beneath the Planet of the Apes is the fact that it switches from George Taylor to another guy who's basically George Taylor, but not. And I now I believe that's because Charlton Heston didn't want to come back for the movie, and he only came back to do a couple of parts. And you can tell he kind of phoned in the performance. It's not nearly as good as in Planet of the Apes. Um, so this... It really suffered from Charlton Heston not being the lead uh, of this movie, that he just disappears in the beginning of the movie, and then you just have to speed run this new guy to be the new, um, to be George Taylor. He even looks like Charlton Heston, and, like, it really suffers from that. Uh, I think, I think you could probably, I think the movie would be a lot better if they stuck with George Taylor, and they, and George Taylor finding um, the Planet of the Apes, or the the humans um, beneath the Planet of the Apes. Um, and then it's 
kind of ridiculous. I did not expect the ending of blowing up planet Earth. I was like, whoa, like that was kind of crazy. It, it kind of, it's like, how do you continue Planet of the Apes when you've destroyed planet Earth? And they did that by, in Escape from the Planet of the Apes, they have Cornelius and Zira and another ape use that spaceship and essentially go back in time. Granted, it doesn't really make sense how they can go back in time, but whatever weird science thing that they wanted to come up with. The original Planet of the Apes had a really cool, like, um, like the closer you go to the speed of light, the faster time moves for everybody else, but not for you, or the slower time moves for you. Um, and that's how they explain how you travel into the future. But you can't use that same logic traveling into the past. So it was basically just like, I don't know, a wormhole or whatever, yeah, whatever, you know. That was basically how they explained it. Um, the science gets increasingly sketchier as the movies go on, especially in this, uh, specifically in this first trilogy of movies, or sorry, uh, the first uh, run of movies. Uh, the the it get, it, the science just gets real wild and real wacky, and it just it stops making sense after a while. Um, it's just it gets a bit unbelievable as the movies go on. But with Escape from the Planet of the Apes, it's actually really fun because you can you have the same kind of idea with Planet of the Apes. But you have two people who saw the normalized side of the Planet of the Apes, you know, because they were the apes um, who, you know, this was a normal situation. And it kind of, it gets reversed. And now they're in the, uh, now they're in the, weird, the, the situation where everything feels wild and wacky and everything like that. So it kind of creates a fun atmosphere. And especially, it's interesting to see the, uh, the humans treating the apes differently than the apes treated the humans. But then, of course, by the end of it, um, you know, personally, I think uh, that one, I forget, I forget the one guy's name, uh, the one who wanted to kill uh, Cornelius and Zira uh, because they, ha they were having a baby. I think the problem with that is because um, what Zira told, what Zira told him was that the way that they, uh, that the Planet of the Apes came to be is that all the cats and dogs died and then the apes were used as, and the apes were used as pets. And then eventually the pets, the apes pets became, you know, they were starting to do a lot of chores and then they became sentient. And I think what you should have done instead of, you know, trying to kill a baby or kill the parents or whatever, I think what you should have done is banned apes as pets. I think that would have been a lot more effective uh, because it, it, there was nothing about what they were saying with, an, with a sentient ape, but it was, it was about, so like, like that's, how, that's how it should have happened. That's, how, that's what they should have done. Instead of trying to kill the sentient apes, they should have just banned apes being used as pets. So when the, all the cats and dogs die, then you, could use, then you can use something else, like, I don't know, birds. That's not gonna create Planet of the Apes. Anyways. That was, um, that's, that's just kind of what I think that they should have done, but, um, you know, that create, you know, a little bit of drama there and whatnot. Um, so, and then Zira and Cornelius tragically die at the end of that movie. And once again, it's like, how are they going to do that? Um, I actually liked, there was a sp specific moment uh, where uh, Zira wanted to, uh, she wanted to talk with, or just kind of sit with um, one of the non-sentient apes uh, who had a kid. And I thought to myself, I'm like, she's going to switch the apes so that her child is with that one and she's going to take that child with her. And so when they, so when they, and eventually at the end, when they uh, kill off uh, Cornelia Zira and their child, um, then, you know, it, it's revealed at the end that, but there's a, uh, but their child is actually still alive and with this ape. And I was like, yep, I... I, I didn't I didn't think of that as like a as like oh my god of course you know whatever it was more like a I see what you did there that's cool I like that um, so Escape from the Planet Apes I think that was the last of the really good ones in my opinion and some people are probably not gonna like that I'm not a huge fan of Conquest for the Planet of the Apes but the biggest problem I have with Conquest of the Planet of the Apes is the timeline and now a lot of i know a lot of people are probably not going to be like up in arms about that and they're probably gonna be like yeah whatever the timeline 
that actually was kind of driving me crazy throughout the entire movie where um, you're like, okay, so this, it takes place like 20 years later and then eight years prior to the start of this movie, um, the do all the cats and dogs died. And now you have a bunch of apes that now look like the evolved apes, which is, uh, is to me, like that, that, that right there is, is kind of a disconnect because it's like, okay, these aren't the regular apes anymore. But then like, how do they evolve? But I think they're supposed to be the regular apes because um, I think they're just, they just need people in costume to be able to play, to do what the apes need to do. Um, so it's, it's kind of a weird thing where it's just like, in my mind, you know, because I had all the sentient apes, I had used, like, like, that's like, they evolved to be more, you know, looking this way. And so the sentient apes are, you know, they look different. But now you have eight years later, and now they're, they all look like sentient apes. And even though they're not sentient apes, and how are they evolving after eight years? Because, and why on earth are we, like, we're skipping so far, like, we're skipping so fast, when, according to Zira, it took hundreds of years for that to happen. Um, and then they're just like, okay, eight years later, you know, it's the same generation of apes, and, like, that would have been, that would have been hired on. And then they just, like, immediately eight years in, and they're just got this whole dystopian slave labor work of apes, and I'm like, this is insane. Like, this is the kind of development you would expect over decades, maybe even centuries, but not over the matter of years. Like, just eight years? That's not very much time for something like this to happen. So for me, that really took me out of it. Um, I think this is overall one of the, this is probably one of the better movies outside of this. Cornelius, I really enjoyed him um, here in Conquest and then in Battle for the Planet of the Apes as well. Really overall, the thing that really just kind of irked me with this movie was the timeline because that just pulled me straight out of it. Um, like I said, as the movies go on, the, it gets like, the science just gets like just more and more, more nonsensical especially with Planet, uh, Battle for the Planet of the Apes, where only like 20 years later or something like that, I don't know, maybe it's like 15 years later, 20 years later, now they're a full-blown society. And it's not even like, and there's literally no explanation on how this happened with non-sentient apes. You know, now, now they're a full-blown society. And one orangutan even said, he's like, you know, I've been working in this armory for 30 years. And it's like, What's the timeline here? Like, is it 20 years? Is it 30 years? Like, is it 40 years? Like, how, how have you had this much happen in this amount of time? And it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and the problem for Battle for the Planet of the Apes for me is just that it's just not that interesting. Um, this was probably the most le or the least interesting of the original one of movies. And, you know, that you could just kind of tell they were running out of ideas. They're just running out of, it, it just, they're running out of budget, I should say, at least. Um, but I think, I don't think Battle for the Planet of the Apes should not have been made. Um, personally, I think the fantastic thing about all five of those original movies is that it tells a complete story. That's the interesting thing. Because when, when, you, when you think about it, like when it starts... When you start, you know, you start off, we have Planet of the Apes, and then you have uh, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. It feels like, okay, the story should end there because the Earth blew up. But then you start over again, but then you, you continue on with Escape from the Planet of the Apes. And then, obviously, you've got to have Conquest for the Planet of the Apes. And you can stop there, um, but then the budget's not really high for um, Battle for the Planet of the Apes. So it feels like, like there's, there's a couple of stopping points right in there um, where you, you think they probably should have stopped. But... Um, unlike a lot of like franchises today where, you, where it's just like stop making movies like the Terminator movies um, I no granted I haven't watched all the Terminator movies but like every time like there are some franchises where every time they make a mo new movie I'm like seriously again like you don't like the last one was terrible why are you doing this again I mean this happened with Indiana Jones last year it's like why are you making another Indiana Jones movie Harrison Ford's like 80 years old. Stop making Indiana Jones movies. Like seriously, the last one didn't do very well. You don't need another Indiana Jones movie. You don't need another Terminator movie. You don't need another Aliens movie. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe your Aliens fans um, really want to see, the, like are super stoked for this new Aliens movie that's coming out this year. I don't know. I'm not in that wheelhouse. So, you know, maybe I'm wrong about the Aliens movie, but like 
I, I know I've heard about like Terminator, like after like what Terminator Two or Terminator like Three, somewhere around there, that they just were not very good, in, but they just kept making the Terminator movies. Um, you know, there's franchises like that where it's just like stop making movies, and it kind of seems like the Planet of the Apes was kind of like that. But then looking at the franchise as a whole, at least in the 2020s, I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is actually a complete package right here. Like these five movies are actually, because it, it starts off um, with Planet of the Apes, right? And then it goes and it, to the, it, and then it shows um, the destruction of the Planet of the Apes. And then it goes back in time and shows the creation of the Planet of the Apes. Um, and those three last three movies actually do work well together because um, you have, uh, you know, how, how you got that sentient ape, uh, those sentient apes who gave birth to Caesar, and then Caesar um, essentially establishes the planet of the apes, and then you have, um, you know, many, many years later, a couple decades later, showing kind of the civilization as it's kind of forming and whatever. Um, and so I think the whole, like all five movies actually form a complete package, and I think it might have been a mistake to have a sixth movie um, in that continuity, because I don't know what they could have done uh, with a sixth movie, but I also don't think I also think it was good that they didn't uh, that they did actually make Battle for the Planet of the Apes. It may be the weakest, in my opinion, maybe the weakest of those five movies, but I think um, the the movies as a whole, as a package, were actually good. Like it's a good it's a good series, and they ended at a great time. They don't need any more movies, and it stopped there, and that's great. I like that. That is good. Um, so that whole, I was actually surprised at how much even the lower quality ones were still enjoyable, um, except for, again, Planet of the Apes, Battle for the Planet of the Apes, sorry, um, was a bit more un un uninteresting. And I think that's kind of the worst you'll get from a Planet of the Apes movie is uninteresting, which is why I don't really like the 2001 Planet of the Apes movie, is because it offends me. The 2001 movie offends me. And the reason I say that is because up to this point, right, I'd watched all the, like I'd watched all the original Planet of the Apes and I'm watching the 2001, the 2001 one, and, uh, or, the, or the, the 2001 remake. And with that movie, I think the worst thing you could possibly do with a Planet of the Apes movie is make it uninteresting. You know, you don't have to you don't have to adhere you don't have to adhere to any of the lore. You don't have to adhere to, you know, any certain particular rules. You're you're recreating the whole story. But the worst thing you can do with a Planet of the Apes movie is make it uninteresting. That's the worst thing you can do with a Planet of the Apes movie because all of the previous ones they had some kind of intrigue with it. Like there's, there is just something inherently interesting about Planet of the Apes. Even though, like, before I watched the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, I, had, I was like, yeah, whatever. I, I guess I don't know. Maybe some. Like, I wasn't really all that interested in Planet of the Apes. I went and saw it anyways, and I thought it was a really good movie. And since, like, with all of the Planet of the Apes movies, they all have something inherently interesting about it because it is such a weird thing and they all explore that weird thing in different ways except for the 2001 movie where they strip all of that from the original movie they strip all the good stuff out and then remake a movie from like just I don't know whatever you know um, like the whole like no it doesn't feel like a madhouse in the two in the remake it doesn't it feels like because all the humans can talk so you don't have the reversal of humans and apes swap places. No, the humans can talk. The apes are just now enslaving humans for whatever reason. So now the, now the apes are racists now. They're not, they're not just people, regular people, who are, you know, who are dealing with, um, with animals. They are racists because they have equals in humans and they believe themselves to be superior to humans and they look down on them as animals, even though they're all still intelligent. And that, that just strips like the, really, like the really inherently interesting bits of the Planet of the Apes movies from, the, from that movie. And then also, like, you know, I like Matt Wahlberg, but in this movie, he just wasn't very good. 
Like the story itself wasn't very good. I know people who have really enjoyed Tim Roth's performance in this. I just thought he was just insane and it just didn't work for me. Um, I know a lot of people enjoyed it. He was really off the wall crazy. To me, it just felt over the top and too much. Um, like <clears throat> I just couldn't take him seriously. He was just so wild and it was, it was just, he, he acted too animalistic in my opinion, um, which is not really something I'm like, it's not really something I wanted to see um, from these, especially considering the, the apes consider themselves to be superior and the humans to be more animalistic, but the apes are the ones acting animalistic and it's, it just doesn't work for me at all. Um, and the story, and also like the ending of the remake just doesn't make any sense because uh, the, he lands, so Matt Wahlberg's character lands on a different planet. So that's, that's something, he lands on a different planet. Um, he ended up going into the future, I guess, um, where the other, the, the other spaceship crashed, landed, and then the apes took over, whatever, over a thousand, couple thousand years. And so he lands on the planet, um, like in the future, but it's a different planet. So you remove all the, ex the, all the other parts of the humans and apes switching places because the apes didn't evolve from the humans because the humans, like, are just, like the humans and apes are, are both ancestors of this, from the same ship. And um, so the humans don't go mute and the apes don't evolve from the humans. And it's not the future of planet Earth, so it's a different planet, so then he can go home. So then he does go home and then Earth has been, it's the same Earth, but now it's apes? Like that doesn't make any sense. Like how do you, like if, if you, if you want to say that you go back, they, that, that apes were back in time and then, you know, instead of humans evolving, it was apes that evolved. Then why do we have, you know, America the same way? Why is there a Lincoln Memorial when there was no Abraham Lincoln? It was ape or ham Lincoln. You know, it's just like, it just doesn't make any sense. So you have nonsensical, you have, you have, you remove all the inherently interesting parts of the Planet of the Apes from the, from the past five movies. And you, and you just, you just strip out all of that interesting stuff. And you have a very confusing ending that doesn't make any sense. And it all just... To me, this is just the worst of the Planet of the Apes movies. I really just dislike this one. To me, it, it just feels offensive to the franchise to be a Planet of the Apes movie because it just, it kind of spits in the face of all the Planet of the Apes movies. But when we get into um, to 2011, when they start with Rise of the Planet of the Apes, um, this movie actually, like, it really felt like something insanely different. Um, you know, having watched six movies, all with the practical makeup effects, none of it really, none of it really feeling believable. Um, that 2000, in the remake, uh, some of the characters looked like the Grinch to me. Um, it's the same kind of makeup you'd see, you saw on the Grinch uh, from the Jim Carrey movie. Um, so that, that, that was just kind of something weird. But like with the, with Rise of the Planet of the Apes, though, um, this one was like it instantly it went to like the top of my list. Um, out of all the movie it's seen so far, it instantly went to that top of the list. And it's because it fixes a lot of the issues with the previous movies, right? Um, it has, it fixes the believability issues, right? Um, they have an explanation. It's like, okay, so instead of it taking hundreds of years, instead what you have is you have this virus, right? That, um, that when it infects an ape, then it'll, um, it'll give them a co like cognitive abilities. And it's like, fantastic. Finally, we, have a, we finally have an explanation of how something, uh, something that seems so unnatural to happen naturally, right? It's because, obviously, humans are going to be the reason of our downfall, right? It's because uh, we, we like to tap into things that we just don't understand, and eventually that's going to bite us in the butt. And that's exactly what it does in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Because if you get infected, you're probably going to die. Um, and if it infects an ape, they're going to gain intelligence. And so um, with Caesar, having him, um, I love the fact that it starts off Caesar can't talk. And by the end of the movie, he can talk a little bit. I also really enjoy um, going through and seeing a ton of little Planet of the Apes Easter eggs from the original series. 
um, that you just see throughout the throughout the movie. And you know, it's just like you know, you have a Statue of Liberty, like he's like Caesar's playing with a Statue of Liberty Lego set or something like that. And you know, just just little things like that, or uh, the fact that re, uh, that Caesar, like the first word he spoke, is is he said no to um, one of the caretakers. Take your stinking bar off me, you damn thirty-eight! Like that, that was, that's, that's a reference, you know? There's a bunch of little different references scattered throughout uh, the next three movies. And I really appreciated seeing those. I thought that was just really cool. I really enjoyed Rise for the, of the Planet of the Apes. Um, just seeing how everything goes, um, seeing Caesar's um, build up, seeing how, how all, everything was coming together um, to create the Planet of the Apes. Everything felt way more believable in this movie than any of the other movies. Like this is the, this movie really felt like okay, so we're gonna take this crazy concept and then we're gonna ground it and we're gonna make this feel real, and it does because the the apes actually the apes look real, the everything about it feels real and so that's what makes Rise of the Planet of the Apes really really good, but it was topped off by Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. This movie, just I think this movie is peak, Planet of the Apes. Rise of the Planet, or Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is just peak because you have, um, you have that uh, <clears throat> human versus ape conflict. This movie doesn't really feel like there's a good guys and there's bad guys because the, you have um, you know, the apes, like Caesar being the head of the apes, he just wants to be left alone. And you have the humans who, just, who need power. And then you, so you have you know, one sect of humans, they try to work with Caesar and they're working together and it's really cool. And you see the humans and apes interacting and that's really cool. But then you have you know, like Koba and it's understandable why he would be like so mistrusting. You know? um, and so you're seeing what Koba's doing you, know, you have some humans who are extremely mistrustful of the apes, and you have some apes who are very mistrustful of the humans, and then that ends up sparking the conflict, and how all of that goes down and everything is just phenomenal. This is definitely the best one of the series. Um, I just, I, I loved how everything was going together, um, and you actually have, and like, especially when Caesar was talking, because, you know, um, he talked a little bit at the end of the Planet of the Apes, or Rise of the Planet of the Apes. But now he, he starts to have more vocal lines and whatnot. And man, are they effective. Like when he first, like when they ride up to the humans, you know, a lot of times they use sign language to communicate with each other. But when he rides up to the humans and he talks, Apes! Do not want war! The way, like, because the way he talks, you can tell he's struggling to communicate, right? He, he's slow and he's like really emphasizes the words and they're not like full fluid English and everything, but you can, like, it is insanely effective um, because you feel the shock. Like, you know he can talk, but you feel the shock of like, oh my gosh, what? Like, that is insane. You feel that. You feel the uh like the weight of what's happened like like and you like you instantly re like like you like if you feel like if you were on their side you'd be like dude i, I don't want any trouble I don't, I don't i don't want any trouble i'm okay okay we'll we'll leave you alone we'll leave you alone cool cool yeah we don't let's, let's, let's not mess with those guys yeah let's just not mess with those guys like that's how that that would be my perspective like if i was in there and that's just me sitting here uh, watching the movie um but Going, uh, especially like at the end, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I kind of wish, this is just kind of like, I kind of wish that um, when when uh, Caesar confronted Koba at the end of the movie, um, that he, that he, what he, that he like said, uh, Koba killed ape, and that he started chanting that, and all the other apes started chanting that along with him. Because that would be kind of like a reference back to uh, Battle for the Planet of the Apes, um, how when one gorilla took over, uh, from uh, who tried to take over for Caesar, um, and he ended up being like really ruthless, and he killed some apes. And then um, when Caesar came back and he was like, "Hey, what the heck is going on?" You know, he like he like they started chanting, "Ape killed ape" or something like that. Ape is killed ape. 
Like that, that was kind of how he was, he was, he was exiled from the group because he did the thing that you're not supposed to do. I kind of wish they did that with Koba. I can understand why they didn't do it. Um, but that was something that was really interesting there. And then also, um, uh, of course, at the end, um, you know, you have uh, Caesar, you know, being like, like, you know, war is coming, right? Like, like we can't, we, like, you, gotta, you guys, you humans got to get out of here. War is coming because I can't stop this, you know. Battle's already happened. Like, you can't get peace back from this. Like, humans don't trust apes anymore. Like, they will they will attack us at some point. So war is coming. And of course that leads into War for the Planet of the Apes. And this movie is definitely the hardest to watch. Um, it's kind of the most depressing one. It is still just as high quality as all the other movies. Um, but it, it, it is just kind of a tough watch because of like, this is some of the more uh, depressing moments for the apes themselves. And it's tough, and it's you know you, you understand where uh, you understand where the colonel's coming from, you understand where the apes are coming from, and it's again it's a thing where it's like you just don't really know which side is right because you know as a human you want the humans to win, right? But you, you see what the humans are doing, and you want the apes to win. The apes just want to you know they just want a peaceful life, and they want to get out of there. Just they just want to live live on their own a peaceful life. Um, and then this is where they introduce the virus is mutated into um, you know, making people mute, um, which kind of come, which comes in at the end where the colonel, uh, he gets infected by the virus and he becomes mute. And, you know, I, I thought that was really interesting because it's like, Caesar goes in to kill him and then he sees that he's mute and he sees that he's regressed and he's like, he can't bring himself to kill him. You know, he, he just, he's like, this doesn't feel, he, he, he feels like he's, he's already been punished enough and at this point, I mean, maybe, maybe it would be a mercy killing. Um, and maybe, uh, maybe that would be a mercy killing for him. And maybe that's just, you know, it's like, this is the worst possible outcome for you. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. And so I think that was, I think that was a really interesting ending for that movie. Um, it, was, it was a tough movie to watch. That's, that's why, for me, it kind of goes below Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And then I ended up having to rewatch Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes because um, after watching all of the other movies, now, now we're back at Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And this one, again, I watched this as the first and last Planet of the Apes movies that I've watched. So I've watched um, basically 11 movies, but once of them was twice. Um, and, the 11, and then, so Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Um, this one works if you haven't seen any of the other movies and if you have seen the, all the other movies. Um, so it... Like, for me, I actually really, really enjoyed this movie. I know some other people, they were like, yeah, it's not as good as the other three, you know, from the recent trilogy. Um, but I guess maybe it's because it was the first one I watched. And so having seen it without having all the other, all the extra context, maybe that's just kind of why it just made it more interesting to me. Because it kind of feels like watching A New Hope, right? When you haven't seen all the other Star Wars movies. Is that, like, you watch it and it's like, there's this whole legend, you know? And you don't really know what it is. Like for me, I was in the position of Noah, where I just didn't know what all this other stuff is. I didn't know who Caesar was. I didn't know any of his teachings. And so like, I, was, I didn't know how all of this was kind of fitting together. And then, um, you know, but also like the, the dynamic of like, okay, so we're a couple hundred years later, see how, you know, the, it's, all, it's all evolved. All the apes are talking now, but they're still not completely 100% fluent. You know, there's still um, some ape in there, which I think is really cool. Because I think they're going to go further into the future. And then, and then the, the last era that they're going to touch on um, is probably going to be where they're talking completely fluently. Um, but I love the, it's post-apocalyptic. You know, you see, um, you know, skyscrapers covered in uh, greenery. It's really cool. I really enjoy all that. Um, and this one's more about like, a, like a, the legend of Caesar. You know, rather than you know, showing the rise of the Planet of the Apes over three movies, um, this one's more about the legend of Caesar. Um, and so you have you have apes and humans, and you don't really know. Again, you don't really know who's right in all of this. So you have May, who um, you know at the end of the movie, you know betrays the apes. Um, you know, trying trying to get this thing to try to build humanities back up. And you're like, you want that to happen, right? But then also, 
but then also, you know, you, you care about, like, Noah's your main character, you know, you care about what his, his journey is, and you see um, Proxima Caesar, and you're like, in theory, a lot of this is correct, and a lot of this is kind of, you know, what you should be doing, but he's doing it in all the wrong ways. And I, I kind of like the idea that Proxima Caesar confuses the ape Caesar with Julius Caesar. Uh, to me, I think that's just funny. Like, that's just a funny, funny concept. I don't know if that's the case, but I like to believe that because it just kind of makes it funny that he, that, that he thinks um, that he takes Caesar's teachings and then takes it with Julius Caesar and he thinks they're the same person. Uh, I think that's funny. I don't think that's really the case, but I think that would be, that's really, that'd be really funny if that was the case. Um, but uh, so th this, th that movie was just really cool. Like, again, it works without all the context um, as just like the first movie you watch. It's a good onboarding movie. And then um, when, you re -watch, when you watch all the other movies, then you start to see like, um, you see the symbol of Caesar. And you're like, oh my gosh. Because th you, start, you, you start seeing that symbol you know, popping up in the original, in that previous trilogy. And it's just the window. It's the window he used to look at when he was a little kid, when he was a kid. And that's, that's just really cool. That's just a really interesting thing that, you know, that you, that you end up seeing. And then you've, you've got it on the necklace there. Um, and so that's just, that's a really cool, how everything is built in together and everything like that. All, all of the movies as a whole in, that, uh, in this most recent uh, four movies, they're so much more believable, especially with the CGI and the motion capture. Um, the emotions come through fantastically. It doesn't seem like they should, but they do. Um, and it is just a lot more believable than all the original movies. Like I really, I enjoyed the original movies, but when they got here, it's like, oh my gosh, these are so, these are so good. Uh, so my ranking for the 10 Planet of the Apes movies would be 10, the 2001 remake. Nine, you have uh, Battle for the Planet of the Apes. Eight, I would say, is Conquest for the Planet of the Apes. Seven would be Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Uh, six would be uh, Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Five would be Planet of the Apes, which I would like to put that one higher, but the more recent ones are just really, really, really good. Um, and then you have four is the War for the Planet of the Apes. Three would be Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Two is Rise for the Planet of the, Ape, of the, Planet of the Apes. And then one would be Dawn of the Planet of the, Dawn of the, Planet of the Apes. So that's kind of how I would rank those movies. This was just a fantastic series, and I got into it only like a month ago. It's cool seeing all the movies and everything like that. This this was just really fun to go through. Get like just get like have a brand new franchise that you can just dive straight in. There's so much there, and it was a lot of fun. Fortunately, there wasn't so much you know to be a part of the whole continuity and everything. But um, if you made it this far, thank you for watching all of this all of this video. Um, hit the like button if you liked it, and uh, if you have any thoughts on your own uh, for Planet of the Apes, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think of the Planet of the Apes movies, um, and if you guys want to see any more, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.